Welcome to The Splash Live. I'm your host, Maddie Mustard. The Splash Live is your home for live and exclusive Greater West Bloomfield news and interviews. We're here to bring you the featured stories from local events and businesses to showcase our great community. The Splash Live is now daily, Monday through Friday, from 9.30 until 10 a.m. on Comcast Channel 15, at t Channel 99, and we're also broadcasting live on CivicCenterTV.com. So join us as we take a look at what is happening around the greater West Bloomfield community. We're first going to start off with our Person of the Week QR code. Every week we highlight someone from our greater West Bloomfield community that is having an impact. Uh, we will be taking submissions for our Person of the Week through the QR code that will be on the screen. To submit an entry, you can scan the QR code on the screen, fill out that Google form with the person's name, reason that they should be recognized for the Person of the Week, and some contact information for them. These nominations can be anyone from educators, students, local businesses, or any other organization you think deserves to be recognized as a person of the week. It's a short little QR code that you can go ahead and fill out there. Um, if you are unable to scan that QR code, you can also call into our station at Civic Center TV uh, right here on Walnut Lake Road and submit those nominations there. We're now going to dive into our great uh, community events in the greater West Bloomfield community that are happening as the Christmas events are wrapping up this week. It's almost time to ring in the new year and we are going to tell you about a few of the events right here in Greater West Bloomfield where you can go and celebrate the new year safely. The first one we're going to look at is Bachelor One Tavern. Get ready to celebrate the end of 2021 with family, friends, and live music at B1 Tavern in Kegel Harbor. This event will be held on New Year's Eve starting at 8 p.m. with live music from Bugs and Beat Out with the good stuff. This will be a fun event with complimentary champagne toast as the ball drops. So if you are looking for a place to bring your family and friends, you can come celebrate right here in Kego Harbor. That's at Bachelor One Tavern right here in Kego Harbor off Cass Lake Road. Another fun New Year's event celebration is happening at the newly renovated Santia Hall. This event will be held at Santia Hall off of Cass Lake Road in Kego Harbor with live music from the George Brothers Band. They have plenty of room to celebrate safely and we'll also be showing the Michigan versus Georgia game. So if you're looking for someone somewhere to ring in 2022 or just want to watch the Michigan play in their bowl game this year, you can help celebrate over at Santia Hall um, off of Cass Lake Road. And then our couple of our ongoing events, we have the Sylvan Lake game night. This event is the perfect event if you're looking for something to do Wednesdays in the winter, whether you're going alone or with friends. The Sylvan Lake game nights are a great way to socialize safely with your neighbors and friends. The Sylvan Lake game nights take place every Wednesday when there's not a Sylvan Lake board meeting in the community center. Game night starts at 5.30 and will go to around 9 p.m. at the community center here in Sylvan Lake. The event is open to all Sylvan Lake residents and you are also welcome to bring your family and friends to get together and play some games there at the community center. January 5th will be the next time that the game nights will be held, so it will be after the new year. Uh, you can bring any games that you would like to play. There will also be games provided as well. So if you want to go somewhere on a Wednesday night this winter to celebrate um, and hang out with your family and friends here in Sylvan Lake, that is a perfect way to do so. The next ongoing event that is wrapping up this week as we head into the holidays is the Farber Center Soul Studio Holiday Market. This is the perfect place to support the Friendship Circle and all the artists that create the items sold inside of the studio, whether it's clothing, mugs, jewelry. Um, they have those beautiful handmade um, pieces that you can go and purchase there at the Soul Studio off of Drake Road at the Farber Center's Soul Studio Holiday Market. And if you have already done your holiday shopping but are looking for something to do this holiday weekend, you can also go visit their exhibition there. It's a community ties exhibition um, that is in their Farber Center Soul Studio there. This exhibition shows that communities are built on meaningful connections and friendship. When we are working together, we are unified in both our hardships and successes. They'll have the market running until this week, so make sure you stop by while it is still available. And if you have an event that you'd like us to feature, you can send us a message on our social media pages at Civic Center TV and Facebook at Civic Center TV 15. We're going to take a quick break, but after we'll check our person of the week. This person is making a positive impact in the Jewish community right here in West Bloomfield through his work as a spiritual director at the Shoal. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. This message brought to you by FEMA. Home fires occur most often in winter. Keep anything that can catch fire at least three feet from heating equipment. 
and never use an oven to heat your home. Stay in the kitchen when frying, grilling, or broiling food. Turn space heaters off when you leave the room or go to bed. Make sure all vents are clear of snow and ice to allow carbon monoxide to vent outside. Have your furnace, heating system, and chimneys serviced each year by a qualified professional. Learn more at www.usfa.fema.gov. Eleven teens a day die from texting and driving. Don't text and drive. And now, back to the Splash Live! Welcome back to the Splash Live, I'm Maddie Mustin. This week we chose Rabbi Kashriel Shemtov to highlight our person of the week. Rabbi Shemtov has made an impact in his community through his work to unite others through the Jewish faith and service. So we're gonna take a look now at why we named Rabbi, Rabbi Kashriel Shemtov our person of the week. During the COVID-19 pandemic and severe lockdowns active across the globe, Rabbi Kazriel Shemtov of Chabad Lubavitch was devoted to keep Jewish traditions alive in the community. Creating hybrid events of both in-person and Zoom Rabbi Kazriel Shemtov has remained steadfast in preserving Jewish tradition as we make our way into the holidays. Leading up to Rosh Hashanah, there are a number of different Zoom events and other programs that we have online. Uh, in, in our case, we don't do it on the day of Rosh Hashanah itself because the listening of the shofar is meant to be in the traditional way. It's meant to be directly hearing the sound of the shofar. But prior to Rosh Hashanah, there are a number of those as well. and through the show from the park MI, you could find out about, about that. Um, as well, uh, there is Chabad.org, which is our overall international website. And over there, you have many materials, many lectures, and many opportunities online that you can connect with as well. One of their largest events here in Michigan, Menorah in the D, was an annual event adapted for the climate of the COVID-19 pandemic. During interviews on the Oakland County Megacast and The Splash, Rabbi Kazriel Shemtov expressed the lengths he and his community underwent to preserve this annual tradition. Years ago, thousands of people would come down and light the menorah together. Last year, when we were told we only could have 25 people downtown, so we set up a whole infrastructure for a virtual sharing of that ceremony with everybody. This year, we're doing both. We're doing a hybrid. So you could come downtown, join us, the live spirit, or watch it virtually. And we're all gonna be able to celebrate and have a wonderful time. As an important figure in Michigan's Jewish community, Rabbi Kazriel Shemtov discusses the importance of the Jewish faith, as well as the meaning of holidays such as Hanukkah. So the idea of Hanukkah is that when you have challenges and there is darkness and you have obstacles, light a candle, bring warmth, bring light, and keep on growing, keep on going forward. You know, in the holiday of Hanukkah, you have the first night you light one candle, the second night you light two, the third night you light three, you're always growing. So here we are, we face the challenge of COVID. Then you would think, well, we have thousands of people the year before, we made the virtual one, we had 25,000 people participating. Now we could do both. We could do both local and virtual. So you take your challenges and you use that as a springboard of growth. Rabbi Kazriel Shemtov continues to persevere through the COVID-19 pandemic. His devotion not only to his faith, but his community is why he is our Person of the Week. Thank you again to Rabbi Kazriel Shemtov for his work in the Jewish community and it is very exciting to name him our Person of the Week this year, week before we head into the holidays. We are now going to talk to Gordon Bodell, who is the um, building director here in West Bloomfield Township. He has been the West Bloomfield Township's building director since 2019, and he works with the other township officers and his team to make sure that every building in West Bloomfield is up to code and safe for our community. So good morning, welcome. Hi, Maddie. Thanks for having me. 
No problem. So let's first talk about your job as the building director here in West Bloomfield and tell us a little, maybe a little bit about your background and what brought you to this job here. Yeah, so uh, my background sort of is in planning and zoning and I've done uh, 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 here uh, in West Bloomfield, I oversee all the building process for commercial construction, residential construction, uh, which entails uh, zoning, planning, construction, uh, building codes and inspections. Um, uh, so any any building that you're occupying here in West Bloomfield, it's been inspected and they have a C of O. And then let's talk about that building permit process if someone is looking to get a permit um, to start building somewhere here in West Bloomfield. What is that process like and who would they go to here in the township um, in West Bloomfield? Yeah, so first, uh, it's always good to reach out to our building department. Um, we can uh, elaborate on the process for your specific project. Um, generally, uh, first of all, not all homes require or not all repairs require permits. Painting, carpeting uh, don't require permits. Um, uh, but most projects do require permits and uh, you'd submit your application generally with plans to our office. Uh, we would review those plans to make sure that they comply with all building codes, uh, zoning codes and uh, grading codes. Uh, and then as long as they do, we would issue a permit uh, for your construction to commence and we would do inspections through that construction process. And then Gordon, in the as a building director, you guys also have a couple of ordinances that you want to make sure um, the West Bloomfield community is adhering by. Can you tell us maybe about the purposes of those ordinances as well as maybe what some of those things are? Yeah, so uh, the primary uh, code that the uh, building department enforces is, is the Michigan Building Code. Uh, it's Michigan Building Code and then there's also the Michigan Residential Code. Uh, we also enforce our local zoning ordinance as well as our local grading uh, and soil erosion ordinance. Uh, but the intent of that building code is to make sure that these structures that people are occupying are safe, uh, that they're ventilated, that there's proper emergency access um, uh, uh, to make sure that you and your family are safe, whatever building you're visiting. And then as we head into the winter months, um, some of those inspections that people have for their buildings or their homes, they may be uh, checking up on those in the new year. Can you tell us a little bit about those inspections, whether it's mechanical, electrical, um, you talked a little bit about the soil erosion, but um, maybe about how someone would get an inspection by some of those township officials here in West Bloomfield. So uh, all of our inspections are generally uh, are a result of someone filing an application with our office. Uh, we have, you know, as you mentioned, plumbing inspectors, building inspectors, electrical inspectors, they all have a specific trade uh, that they're licensed with the state on. So all of our inspectors are licensed. Uh, uh, they will come out and, and do the inspection depending on the type of work that's involved. Um, and that's where you can either, you'll either get an approval sticker or you could get a denial sticker. Uh, but that denial sticker is obviously just ensuring that it's complying with the codes and then we'll come out and do a re-inspection if there's issues. Uh, and, and our inspectors here really are good at guiding uh, you, uh, you or your contractor and uh, what they can do to ensure that they're complying with the building code. And Gordon, as we head into 2022, as West Bloomfield Township Building Director, is there anything else that you want the West Bloomfield residents to know if they're looking to obtain a permit or um, get some of those inspections headed into the new year? Uh, so I guess my advice would be uh, come give us a call, come see us. Uh, we're here to help you through your construction project. Uh, a lot of time people think that the uh, building department is a, uh, obstructionist or, or in the way uh, when ultimately we, we want you to build, uh, we want you to make those improvements, but we want it to be safe uh, uh, for future generations. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Gordon. Thank you for having me. Once again, I was joined by West Bloomfield Township Building Director Gordon Bodell. He is making sure that all those buildings in West Bloomfield are safe for you and your family. We're now gonna take a look at one of our local businesses who changed their business over from a brick and mortar store in Kego Harbor to solely online in 2018. We talked to co-owner Erica Strouch about their business, Lolly Ella. Let's go take a look. This past weekend, Lolly Ella Jewelry held a pop-up shop event at Sage Crane Floral Shop in Kego Harbor to display their products. 
we talked to co-owner Erica Strouch about how Lolly Ella started. So Lolly Ella started with my four sisters and my mom, and we always had a love for jewelry, and we always played with my grandmother's jewelry as kids. So as my youngest sister graduated from college, we came to a point that if we don't do something, we would like to do a small business, and because we love jewelry so much, it was a perfect opportunity. And we called the store Lolly Ella after our two grandmothers and our great grandmother, it's their names put together. So, and we really created Lolly Ella, not only because we enjoy jewelry, but we wanted to share our joy for jewelry with others and empowering women to feel better about themselves. By putting on a few accessories, it's amazing how you can take an outfit you wear all the time and just freshen up the look. Put a new scarf on, put a necklace on, put a pair of earrings on, and it makes you feel like a million bucks. And we just really wanted to build women's self-esteem and make them feel good about themselves, and that's what we thought accessorizing does for you. After 14 years at a brick and mortar store in Kiko Harbor, Erica told us about the process of transitioning their business over to an online store. So we transitioned from being a bricks and mortar store to online during the pandemic and um, it gave us an opportunity to be doing a lot of virtual stuff with our customers and being able to still have that personal touch and that personal guidance for accessorizing but to being able to do it virtually gives us another area to expand to other uh, clientele. A lot of our customers actually in the area moved out of state so being online gives them quick access for that and then all our social media with Instagram and Facebook gives us opportunities to be able to reach new um, opportunities. Their ability to host pop-up shops at Sage Green has made it easy to show their jewelry and other products to their customers in person. So Sage Green is a wonderful place to host pop-ups. It's a gorgeous flower shop and we love all her unique ideas and we are a wonderful pairing to do that with them. It gives us an opportunity to be able to showcase our small business in person and now being an online business, it's nice for people to come see our jewelry and be able to accessorize in person. With the new year fast approaching, we asked Erica what is in store for Lolly Ella in 2022 and what the new year may bring their company online and in person. So we're looking forward to 2022 of continuing our pop-up circuit and being able to still have interaction with our customers, still do virtual stuff online because a lot of people still enjoy that too, and being able to have a greater presence here in the area. Through their love for accessorizing and family, the Strouch family has taken Lolly Ella to new heights since moving their small business online. As 2021 wraps up, Lolly Ella hopes that the greater West Bloomfield community can support them in shopping local in the new year. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Maddie Muschin. Welcome back to The Splash Live. I'm Maddie Mushin. Thank you to Erica again for letting us come into their pop-up shop at Sage Green Floral Shop this past weekend and check out all of their beautiful jewelry and other products that they are selling this year. I'm now joined by West Bloomfield Parks and Rec Supervisor Chris Frey. We're going to talk about the ways in which he has worked with his team to oversee all of the maintenance and recreation of the West Bloomfield Parks. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Chris. No problem. Thank you for having me. So Chris, let's begin with your role in Re West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation as the supervisor and a little bit about what either your day-to-day -day looks like or what you've been up to in 2021. Sure. I am the park supervisor. Um, so I oversee the daily functions of the, the crews that work in the parks. Um, we have multiple different crews that are doing multiple different things all day, um, cleaning parks, opening parks, uh, mowing turf, uh, working on fields, softball fields, soccer fields, uh, hard surface courts like cricket, tennis. Um, we have building maintenance folks that uh, take care of our buildings. We have a mechanic that works on our equipment. Um, so we're, we're always doing a lot of things every single day of the week. And then you've been working for West Bloomfield Parks for over 20 years. Tell us a little bit about um, how you began there at West Bloomfield Parks and how your job has shifted throughout the pandemic. Sure. Um, I, what, before I came here, I had a, I owned a landscaping company, a small little landscape company, and um, knew I wanted to, to do something a little bit in the same field, but um, in, the, in the public sector. So I, uh, I came over to West Bloomfield Parks um, and worked my way up to the role that I am in now. I was hired here to cut grass over 20 years ago. Um, it was a small department. Um, there's eight full-time Park staff now, we have 12 to 15 seasonal uh, staff that come to us in the summertime when we're, it's our busy season. Um, so 
uh, that's pretty much how I how I got here. And then as we go into the winter season, uh, there's a little bit of snow on the ground, but we want to maybe get into those sled hills. You also uh, are in charge of the snow removal there. Tell us a little bit about what the winter season and the snow means for you and your staff at West Bloomfield Parks. Sure, we have two sled hills that are that are closed currently, but they are they're set up and ready to go. Uh, we fence them off for everybody's safety. We have return aisles so people can walk back up the hill. Um, so they're 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 up and ready to go, but they're currently closed. Um, when we get enough snow and the conditions are right, we'll open them. We post on the both sled hills that they're open. Um, it's always uh, posted on our website, whether they're open or closed, or you can always call our office to find out if they're open or closed. There's one behind uh, the library at Civic Center Plaza, and there's one here at Marsh Bank Park where I'm at. And yes, we also do uh, a lot of snow removal in the park system. Um, we, um, we, we plow all of our parks and sidewalks. Uh, we have room rentals and classes going on in our buildings, so we have to keep those uh, safe for the pedestrians. Um, we use a lot of liquid uh, salt uh, or a lot of liquid salt brine, which is basically just salt water. Um, we, we're, we're trying to be a little bit greener every single day that we're here. Uh, we are a park system, so we're trying to be green. Um, so we use, we're trying to use a lot less salt. About six, eight years ago, we introduced uh, our, our liquid de-icing program and um, it's working out well. We manufacture liquid brine here at the shop, which is just, uh, like I said, a mixture of salt and water and um, we put in our trucks and we spray it on the ground instead of putting down rock salt, uh, which can be a lot more harmful to the environment than the liquid salt. Uh, so we do a lot of snow removal. We come in early, four, five, six o'clock, just so we have everything open and ready before our classes start and our employees get in. So um, we're always on call. We're, all, we're always here doing our work. And then Chris, with the Michigan weather, obviously you've seen everything in your past 20 years here but do you um, see a, a difficulty with the Michigan weather and the snow coming and going quite frequently in those winter months with the park maintenance? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a constant battle. I feel like I watch a lot of weather in the wintertime uh, around October, November-ish. I'm always watching weather um, during the day on the computer, my phone, um, watching the local new, newscasts in the evening, uh, trying to figure out when the snow is gonna come and when it's going to be done with if it comes early enough and folks are still here in the parks in the evening we have to come back after we go home we have to come back and and uh and and <clears throat> do some work in the evening or depending on what time it starts snowing and what classes and things we have in the morning i have to call folks in uh in the middle of the night to come in so they're here <clears throat> with enough time to get things open and to to actually get from our shop down around the township before the roads get too busy so we have to get out of our shop and to our lots so that we can do our work before the roads get uh, too backed up with with travel um but yes it's a it's a constant struggle uh figuring out that weather um it, every agency every snowplow guy has the same problem of figuring out when it's going to snow when it's going to stop snowing but um it's it's a lot of weather watching for about six months of of the season and chris with the pandemic and the labor shortages that we've been seeing throughout all the businesses and industries here, especially in Michigan. Have you guys found it difficult to find people to help you with the maintenance of the parks as well as those snow removals um, as the snow is coming in this December? Yeah, definitely. Um, when times were good six, eight years ago, we, uh, we would have, like I said, anywhere from 12 to 15 seasonal staff in the summertime. Uh, last year, we had five. This year, we had, I think about eight or nine. Um, so this year was a little bit better. Last year was definitely our hardest. Um, and with having the fewest summer employees we've ever had last year, our parks were probably the busiest they've ever been. You know, everybody was working from home and staying home and staying safe. But a lot of people uh, found out that they had a lot of good parks in the West Bloomfield and they showed up and they showed up uh, in, in bulk. So there was a lot more park usage in 20 and 21 this summer um and we were definitely struggling i think every year it's it's getting a little bit harder to find uh summer help um but we 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 put out signs and banners in our parks um there's there's information on our website um word of mouth stuff 
Um, but yeah, we, we definitely, we definitely, uh, it's definitely getting harder and harder to find summer help in the winter months. Uh, those, those folks usually tend to go back to school. Um, so we don't, we only keep like two or three seasonal staff around in the winter time to help us with snow removal, um, and weekend work. Cause we're, we're open pretty much seven days a week, 365 days a year. The parks are always open and there's always somebody here in the parks, um, whether they're checking garbages or cleaning restrooms, um, you know, making sure that things are safe for everybody to come and enjoy the parks. So we're pretty much here seven days a week, a uh, year round. So, um, yes, it's definitely a, been a struggle with seasonals. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll see some, some more this summer. Um, but, uh, it's, it's been a, it's been a problem the last few years. And Chris, as we head into 2022, looking back on 2021 and this year with the pandemic still ongoing, um, if you want to reflect on the obstacles and maybe successes that your team has had, uh, here in West Bloomfield parks. Yeah. Well, the biggest one, like we just talked about with seasonals, uh, with staffing, that's our biggest hurdle in the summertime. We're so busy. We, we, we do so much work in the summertime and we need all hands on deck. Um, so that's been our biggest hurdle the last couple of years. The full-time staff has had to um, kind of drop what they're doing and do um, more of the, the day-to-day stuff that our seasonal, our seasonal staff helps us with. So when our seasonal staff is here, our full-time guys can go do special projects, um, you know, improve things or replace, you know, broken things. So we've had to, tone that down a little bit less and just get back to our main uh, taking care of the park. So they've had to kind of switch gears a little bit uh, and do that kind of work. We've um, they've had to the, the full time staff has had to cover a lot more shifts, whether it be evening shifts uh, or weekend shifts, because we're here seven in the morning till 10, 11 o'clock at night. Um, so we usually have two shifts during the day in the sum- spring, summer and fall months. And the winter time we go back to one shift. So uh, seasonal staff and staffing has probably been our biggest hurdle um, the last few months, and and the full time staff has really um, uh, kicked it in overdrive and, and covered all those shifts, and and we've been able to have bodies around in the parks and get done what we got to get done. Uh, like I said, hopefully next year we we get some better some more staff, and um, and um, and we'll be we'll be trucking right along, but. We got to do what we got to do. The parks are always here. They're always open. Um, a lot of people say that they haven't seen any real difference in what we've been doing the last couple of years, whether they didn't realize that we were low on staff, but we're low on staff. And um, and we've we've stepped it up and, and been able to keep things going. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Chris. No problem. Thank you. Once again, I was joined by Chris Frey. He's West Bloomfield Parks supervisor here in West Bloomfield. That's it for today's show. Thank you to Gordon Bodell and Chris Frey for joining us this morning. And a special thanks to our Zoom producer, Brendan Schreiber, for filling in today and yesterday to make sure our guests joined us. As always, thank you to Calvin Brown, our booking producer and board operator, for making this show possible each and every morning. And thank you so much for joining me as we explored all the people and events going on in the greater West Bloomfield community. And make sure to watch any interviews and stories you miss at civiccentertv.com. You can watch them online in HD and as always you can make sure to tune in live on Civic Center TV on Comcast channel 15 and at and channel 99. Thank you to all of our friends in Orchard Lake, Sylvan Lake, Kiko Harbor and West Bloomfield. Have a great Christmas for all of those who celebrate. Thank you for watching the Splash Live. I'm your host Maddie Mushton.